Hey, what is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Asia Out Reacts with the two hosts of the Asia Out Podcast, Mike Fantini and Evan Worrell. As you can see from today's video title, and probably now on the screen, we're joined by Tom Rarick. Had him on last year after the 2021 season ended. He agreed to come on and uh, hang out with us again, similar to Max, similar to Ungs, just trying to talk to everybody as much as we can. Uh, you know, he's coming off a hell of a season, historic season for the Bluecoats, won that Fred Sanford, so can't wait to talk about some of that and just kind of what happened with the show design, thoughts behind everything, just what was the season like, just get into all that stuff, and we're going to do what we always do and play some stuff and talk about it, and hopefully everybody can learn something. So, Tom, how's it been? It's been a minute. I didn't get a chance to say hi in finals lot. Yeah, I didn't see you, but um, yeah, it's going going well. Just got done, obviously, with the season and finishing up all the marching band writing and all that kind of stuff, beginning uh, the fall band stuff and get ready for next year and you know, keeps on keeps on going. So, yeah, uh, how was yeah. Good, obviously good congrats on that uh, on the season and obviously Thanks. winning the Fred Sanford and just overall too the Blue Coats silver medalists, uh, a great production that they put together. Uh, all came together at the very end of the season. But how does it feel yeah. now? Does it does it settled in? Was it just kind of a shock and awe moment when they said your name? I mean, I mean, it's the first time for the core, first time for me. So it's obviously it's special. Um, so it's, yeah, it's surprising is the wrong word, but it's also like, it's like, we always kind of like set out with this kind of goal and feel like we're in the conversation, you know, on, on most years too. So it wasn't like a surprise, but it was certainly exciting that it happened. <laughs> it was, oh yeah. It was a, you know, it was, a, it was a season that like, there's so many great percussion sections this year. So it was really fun to, well, m most times it was fun, but it was like, it was, it was great. Like seeing the achievement of the activity at large. And then also just seeing the trajectory of our percussion section, just kind of like they started out great. And we like, you know, had a, it's a, the seasons was kind of a grind. I'm sure it was for everybody. You have your highs and lows and they, they kind of reached a, a point of consistency at the very end that really kind of propelled them into finals week with, you know, three great performances and yeah. So just really proud and really, um, you experienced everything along the way, I guess, you know, in terms of, you know, excitement at the product and the show and the possibilities, the self-questioning, the all, all those things that people go through in the middle of a process. And then to kind of, you know, follow through to an end result that was, you know, really special for the for the core. It was a interesting ride and, you know, it was it was ultimately really rewarding and really proud of it. Absolutely. So congrats to you. Congrats to the tech staff, uh, the other designers, and obviously congrats to the members of the, the 2022 Blue Coats Percussion Ensemble and Drum Corps as well. Um, you mentioned the show design, and this show was, it was an interesting one. I think that it yeah. definitely caught people's attention from the beginning. So what were those conversations like with pitching the show idea and the, I guess, behind the scenes look of putting it together and what you wanted it to do and the story that you wanted it to tell kind of how that all come to fruition. Uh, well, I mean, I, I guess a lot of it, a little bit too, was just trying to look for something that was different. We'd done two years of Beatles shows that were, I love those shows and we did a lot of cool things in them and like, I'm extremely proud of them, but it was time for something else. I think we all yeah. felt that. As, as a design team and we just have like a running kind of folder of like tunes that we just if doesn't mean we want to play it necessarily but like there's something interesting there's something intriguing there's something just ideas in your back pocket you can pull from whenever you need some inspiration you need some cool stuff exactly. like will this stuff combine well yeah Makes and sense. not even not even that just like hey this thing is cool i'm not sure what it would do if it even has a place in any show it could be just a mood it could be a texture whatever you just throw it in the folder and just like people just listen to it. So we have that kind of thing running and like there's, we had a few like little, you know, ideas, but uh, it was actually from like the visual side of the aisle that like, cause I, I, I forget who had thrown that tune, the Taming the Dragon that actually has the narrative from the show uh, like composed into it. I don't know who put that in there in the folder, but it was, you know, it's, it's great drumming. It's really cool textures and really cool from a, you know, narrative. It's also kind of vulgar too. <laughs> <laughs> if you listen to the original, uh, which was also awkward to kind of, you know, say, hey, we're doing this show about this thing, but it, it's explicit, so just be careful. Um, 
but anyhow, but the, I think for the visual side of things, people kind of were, were, we started getting kind of questions like, Hey, this, what's this Tame of the Dragon tune? Like, it's really interesting from a story perspective and a, you know, a imagery perspective. Uh, so, and then that kind of comes back to the music side and you kind of start going, well, okay, like this, this is really neat. We could do something with this kind of vibe, this analog kind of like, I don't know, like, it's not really psychedelic, but it's like dream state kind of not in reality kind of stuff. And that's yeah. interesting from a textural standpoint. Like, so you really kind of, we started to get the sense of like, okay, there's, there's something here from an overriding kind of vibe. There's something, there's a sense of like the, the, the narrative is like not super, like it's a very simple, like kind of story. Really. The guy just has like a, Hey, I had this dream. I'm with this guy. This guy cuts us off in traffic I get mad and then I talk about how I'm going to manage my feelings in the future based on how that kind of scene went. There's that revelation, I guess, at the end, right? right? So it's not really a compelling story necessarily. And that's kind of the cool thing about it. We're not trying to say anything very like, you know, we're not trying to teach anything necessarily. It's just more of like an experience. And I think, yeah. just, and that was intriguing because it wasn't so heavy that we felt the need to do anything, um, it was open-ended musically, I guess, on how we would treat it. So it's kind not of, like it, overly esoteric that people just can't grasp it. It's pretty straightforward, right? Uh, and and that allows you to kind of like take that and so like, what if we blew that out over twelve minutes, like that narrative, edit it down to what's important, digestible, and kind of you know retains enough of, of the of the original kind of like vibe of it. But also makes it kind of understandable by a in a in a drum core setting, and then kind of kind of insert music that kind of reflects those moods or the actions or you know and that was kind of the, the motivation for kind of like scoring the whole thing or kind of like a word painting I guess really interpreting words and like what that would sound like musically and that reciprocal nature of those two things what you're seeing and hearing. Right. So that was really interesting. And then the draw of like, kind of like we'd done shows in the, you know, the mid 2010s that were felt, you know, the tilt, the connect noise, the, those things that were always kind of like doing something a little bit new or uncomfortable that we hadn't done before. And not that the Beatles shows weren't experimental in some ways, but like they were, they were more like rock concerts in a way. Like yeah, we had yeah, kind of done those things. So injecting like a spoken narrative throughout the entire show and figuring out different ways to inject that was really, I think it was kind of like the thing that drew us there was like, okay, this is our new thing. We're going to try and take on this challenge and make this, you know, palatable, you know, and, and, you know, throughout the course of a show and just like, and use music and be relatable that way. And just, and try and depict this as you go through the show. So that, you know, that was the challenge of that. And I think that's what it kind of drew us to, you know, that material. So I think that that's early on. I think a lot of people, including myself, would were watching the show early season and we were trying to find this super deep meaning. And I was just like, what is going on? Like, yeah. and it wasn't done, obviously, at that point. But right. early season, I, I remember I had several questions. I was like, I, I have no idea what's happening. Like, what am I supposed to be? <laughs> yeah. Until you kind of get to the end and you're like, all right. All right. It <laughs> definitely takes the full watch to somewhat get it but admittedly same here i didn't really the first few times i saw it didn't really resonate with me a whole lot but the more times i saw it you know watching the regionals on flow and all that stuff it's like it grew on me little by little by little and i picked up new things every time because there's a lot going on throughout the entire production and it's was really cool once like fourth or fifth read i texted evan and i was just like this is actually like I like this. Like, they're playing a lot of stuff. They're still, even if it's very, very new age drum core and its approach and kind of not traditional in any any sense, there still are right. moments. And I noticed this from the on-field battery cam. When I watched that, I was like, they're, they're hoofing it. Like, they're still, oh, yeah. despite having the skin of this new drum core type of product, they still yeah. have those, those elements of just, like, drumming a lot, running Probably around done. the field. But the, bo the body all makes sense. The cohesiveness was there. Like, it was really, really cool to watch develop. And it's, I appreciated it more and more every time I watched it. Yeah, the the bones are the same, right? It's like it's yep. moving and playing. And, like, when you're out in the field, you see that. Like, it's really obvious that there's a high degree of, like, simultaneous, like, 
you know, demand, all those things, all the judge words that, you know, you, that we, you'd use to describe all that stuff. But, um, and we knew that too, like as far as like the show is a bit more obtuse than things we've done recently, for sure. Like in terms of, it's going to take a few listens. It's going to take, education is probably the wrong word, but just like us explaining it or at least performing it more, or performing it more convincingly like to get it to like kind of resonate and be really um, effective in the way that we want it to be. So, and this will segue, I guess, into watching this, but like what you said, performing it more convincingly at the end, there's no denying what just the whole core was doing, moving really well, playing really well, uh, spinning, dancing really well. Like there was an, un, or it was undeniable that it was just a great ensemble. And that really came across and help pro propel the show, I think, a, a whole lot, which is what you want. Uh, yeah, we, we certainly got there. It was like a process of, I think, I mean, we changed the show a lot. Oh, at, at, at parts of the show, we changed a lot. Like, the very end of the show had several different iterations till we got that the way we wanted it to be. Like, there was a couple weeks where it was a down ending. It was like a, kind of like the, the guy woke up at the very end. It was very, it was more artistic, and it was very, very cool. But it just wasn't, maybe what the arc of the show needed to be ultimately effective. I, I think in, in, in that arena, but like, uh, but I think it was one of those like inertia things where like we, we kept changing and adjusting and like uh, the members just kind of like took that and were pretty like steady, consistent with all that stuff, but they never had a chance to get comfortable. I think until like the last week or so, and they really kind of, you know, inadvertently kind of peaked at the right time. We didn't plan it that way necessarily. Like we don't, you, you want to, you want it to be right, of course, when you hand it to them. But like, you mess with it, you kind of like keep it going. You tweaks here, tweaks there, tweaks there, and then eventually, you know, sometimes it just works out in a really good pacing to where they felt. I think they're most comfortable that that final week. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Well, yep. let's get into yep. it, gents. We have a sure. video here that um, the I think it's the Blue Coats like media production team did of a percussion standstill yep. and this is not on youtube anywhere this is like kind of exclusive to us right we'll be the first for ones now. putting this anywhere yeah for the time being like the yeah the course media team did a fantastic job um liz clayton who runs that department of um uh, the blue coats like media social media outreach stuff is does a great job heading that up and the videographers and uh just you know the, the the whole media team just did a great job all summer but they uh shot some video for finals week for us some of the stuff that the front ensemble did as far as uh like their kind of lot tunes the um uh standstill performance here and and you know some other special things you know you know throughout that week so yeah I for see. sure all right, let's dive in we'll pause many times i'm sure and elaborate but i'm excited the video quality is great we previewed it a little bit beforehand let's just get right into it uh, did i go all the way back yeah here we go perfect i had this trippy dream where this cat was driving me around in an old convertible later on it turned into a vw van and near the end it was more like this spaceship kind hard of not to smile at that <laughs> yeah we were high up looking over the road, but the front console was shaped like a van, and it still had the convertible top. Great mix of the guy vibe was color around was and slightly assisted by the pathetic and stuff. Like it's yep. that kind of dreamy quality of the bowed vibes. It sets the tone really well. Yeah. This kind of incessant, like, dotted quarter it is. It was always to me like an abstracted kind of alarm clock in a way. It's, I mean, you're not supposed to get that necessarily. It was just always that kind of like ting, 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 like little thing. To me of like the Siri or the Apple yep. alarm. Yeah. Yeah, like if you can imagine a cross between Blue Reed and Dennis Hopper. That's the dude who was driving. Nice. I'm going to pause for a sec to point out sure. I really dug the way the lead in to like the that phrase coming to fruition where it was just those crescendo Herta figures into those two roll figures which led perfectly into like I guess the hit you could call it 
And I want to sure. back up a little bit and just let people point out. I just really love that part of that phrase, even in the lot without the front, but it works so well to go in. It's interesting. It's got the growth. They hit you with the hand speed on the rolls and it's just clean, pristine and right into the phrase. I also be love. Free. Go ahead. Go ahead, Tom. I was going to say, before you do that too, like this, when I listen to these parts, like individually, that's why I kind of sent this video to is like, when you just hear Herta, 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 roll up, you know, like that's, it's cool because they play it well. Cause you know, they, it's, it's immaculate usually, <laughs> but, but it, without everything together, like the voice, the keyboard stuff, that in the background, like balancing all those things together is like really the fabric of the phrase. I found when I listened to things like piecemeal that I was like, oh, I should make that more complicated. I should make that harder. I should make that more impressive. But a lot of this was like clearing way and like creating a bed for the narration to like live on top of, on top of, but also be interesting at the same time or hope to be. Uh, so I guess if you're listening to the percussion, percussive voices, like listen to the, I think the, the front ensemble information, the battery, the way it colors and kind of like has a more static quality and allows the voice to kind of like do its thing. Like in a, and they all have their own frequency range an expressive range that they kind of operate in. So what I was going to say is I remember watching a standstill of the blue coats at a show when it, I think it got rained out or something, but the front ensemble wasn't playing. It was just the battery and the horns, yeah. but you miss so much of the percussion <laughs> ensemble, mm -hmm. uh, just interplay with the sure. front, not being there, but listening to this right now, there's just so much enjoyment between what's happening front to back that it's hard not to smile. So, yep. All right. Let's. I think I went back far enough here. Let's listen to that again and let it uh, let things keep going here. Yeah, like you can imagine a cross between Blue Reed and Dennis Hopper. That's the dude who was driving. This changes the energy. Yep. Yeah, it's really creating uh, valleys dynamically for the voice to come through, but still. Playing underneath it. At least for color shades. So much rhythmic variety coming from the battery. One thing I get to a lot of, and you can elaborate, is uh, just the interplay back and forth of maybe when there's a moment of more front space as far as the density of notes, like the battery will fill in, and then the the rolls flop when like there's some of those fast runs where the the battery's playing more of those bigger zoom 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 just to like compensate to where things never feel super thick laid on top of each other. Yeah, and you kind of save those devices for, like, when you want some things to be vertical and really full, like, front to back, too, like, propel you into, like, the next dynamic or, like, the next heightened part of the phrase. Um, so, like, that first part of it, like, when they hit that hit, it's like the, the brass stuff is pretty chordal, like, and it stays that way for, for a while. So it's kind of up the percussion to kind of create that up and down and kind of in, into these kind of, like, sub-phrases and, like, a sense of energy and variety and... That kind of, you're reacting to the kind of the hand speeds and the different things like that. Right. So it's each one of those kind of sub four bar phrases that has its own like little identity, but also should be progressing forward into the next phrase to when it broadens out into like a, you know, like a 12, eight kind of thing. And then uh, ultimately climaxes of that kind of different kind of hand speeds with the six stroke roll motif that we kind of use throughout the show. Um, and kind of caps things off rhythmically there at the very end. Very cool. I think that you said too, like, I love when people build those micro phrases on top of like a bigger idea to really climax an idea. So, yep. As everybody hears my ice clink around in my glass. All right, let's keep going. Hear this next phrase. Have a We're set lead in. North, coming up to a stop line. The classic rare cross stick. Back, cross stick, man. There's you a couple point, of them. Hold on. You pointed that out. Uh, where's my mouse? Yeah. Where's my mouse? It's fine. Go ahead. We talked. Uh, I think if you hit the space it. bar, 
stuff. No, it's not YouTube. I don't know if the space bar works. I'll try it next time, though, when we start up here. But uh, you pointed it out when we hung out with you last yeah. season at the end, end of the year. You kind of called out the cross stick thing. It's like it works well where you put it, but now I can't never – I can't not notice it. It always <laughs> no. stands out to me every time it happens. I'm just like, oh, there it's it is. First of my, my, cross stick. First of my own self-scouting, I guess, or like, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> But no, I, mean, it, I think it, it just, always works. It just, it's a way. It's a way to add, I think, a uh, sense of interest. Like, but also being subtle. I think. I mean, I'm not the first one to do it. Obviously, I, I remember. Yeah. I Jim Casella used to use it to great effect, uh -huh. like with you know, Santa Clara, those you know, late '90s, early 2000s lines. That's probably like most impressionable in my head. Where it's like he wasn't afraid to kind of just provide like a groove and a sense of color, and yep. it was a way to like the whole percussion section had a sense of energy and kind of involvement. But it was extremely supportive. Yeah, it's a way I, where you're not the focus, yeah. but you still want that drive and momentum and like that metronome yeah. type deal. But you want it to groove, fit in with the music and what else is happening on the field, and it just works really well. And yeah, I'm not yeah. calling it out saying it's like worn no, out or I, anything. It's like I don't, I love it. I, don't I just can't unsee it. <laughs> so you mentioned about the drum set players too. Like we did use two two drum set players, uh, uh, Jai, who played the past two seasons, and uh, Artem, uh, who's on side one, and they're just fantastic performers and very individual, but also they work extremely well together. I like that. If you want to back up before this little tenor thing too. Yeah. yeah. I was going to back a, up a minute. There's a split like kind of like 16th lick. They kind of split between the two of them that kind of introduces this new phrase. This whole thing from here to the end of this production was all about kind of changing this, uh, kind of changing the mood of the show. We start out with like he, they, they, we're kind of traveling across. We go from side two to side one, mm -hmm. like physically on the field. Uh, but it's also as we're kind of experiencing like going up the highway with this. There's like the part with the we saw this washed out orange and the pollution. There's the whole tone thing with like in the in the keyboards and a and a and a roll that kind of goes directionally ends with a it, a lot of little textural kind of like points in there. Also adds some kind of like tension at the very end of this as with this impending kind of conflict that's coming. So again, these aren't like overt things, but they're just like things to lead you through like the storyline of the show. And this is very much like composed to like the, the rhythm of the vocal or the narrative. You kind of had that first and then you kind of put the, the music below it to kind of support that and like there, work within those peaks and valleys. There was the a few times throughout the show where the, the rhythms really fit with the, with the yeah. narrative and the vocals. And it was certainly planned out that way. I mean, but it's a different thing when you like put it on the field. Like when we did this section, you're about to hear like the first like couple times, like on the field, like it was, I mean, to be quite honest, it was a mess. Like, it's like, oh, that's never going to work. It's like talking and playing and this aggressive movement across the field. And it's, it just takes a level of, I think, well, shout out to like Ryan Kilgore, Alan Justice, the guys that really got in there and like, detailed this dynamically to make sure that that stuff yeah so like in the score where it goes down like the end of two like that's important that they're at piano by then because the voice starts on three and you have to be able to hear that and it's it was a whole different level of kind of coordination ensemble balance right so we had the battery we had the front ensemble then we also had this vocal element you had to like balance all three of those things rather than just kind of two entities so shout out to those guys and Obviously, Roger included with that too, but yeah, uh, Ryan, Ryan Kilgore, especially like kind of monitoring that like overall ensemble and readability of all these elements was just uh, invaluable in this process. So, yeah, yep. all right, let's hear that drum set lead in again. Keep sure. going. Hear the end of this phrase one more time. Like this scared feeling, like something was going to happen. 
<laughs> the hair, I love it. <laughs> I know, right? I was going to point that out. Yeah, JP killed it. Oh, dude, the, so the cool. race car in with the roll. That's so cool. I never, I literally never noticed that until right now. As we yep. approach the light, yeah, all the press is, is like a directional thing, too. They, they hear it and they go, and just cut us off. Goes by. 